Well, only one thing was that I took too much pressure that time. Okay. Of being Divyanka's partner, you know, uh-huh. Divyanka Tripathi, his partner, husband. My first hiccup was that she's such a big star. How will I be able to? Like in my head, I was thinking that I'd have to take care of her expenses. <laughs> so I said, how will I afford? Uh, before I proposed to her, in front of her family, we sat down, and the family and her, everyone, made me aware that it will be. It's quite likely to happen that you'll be compared, that you'll be tagged. Hanji. Blah 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 blah. Are you okay with that? When I went and I uh, and he said to me, he says, you know, I'm. I can start sending you to Dubai. I said, oh okay, sure. <laughs> I didn't know what context he's talking about. So, but there was he was. Then, as he kept on talking, that's when I started realizing that okay, it's some shady stuff that he's talking about. It. I've been. I had taken a sabbatical from TV for the same reason because nothing good. I didn't disclose. I didn't disclose it. Hmm. I got mature or sensible very late in life. I knew that my parents will not like it. Okay. Uh, if I ever was to disclose this, you know, this desire of ah. uh, becoming an actor. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bollywood Bubble. I am in the presence of someone today who is charming in his demeanor whether on screen whether off screen when he walks into a room he owns the room and sorry ladies he's taken <laughs> but yes we see him currently on Chalak Dikhlaja and there is so much of work that this actor has done which we will be exploring which we will be diving into and a lot more but before that let me welcome amongst us Vivek Dahiya Thank you so much. <laughs> Hello Vivek, how are you? Very good Nawaz and thanks for such a lovely introduction. Absolutely because you know I have always felt this like for the very first time when I saw you on screen and I vividly I vividly remember that was on Yeh Mohabbat hai. Mm. And I was like yaar this person looks so charming on screen. And even after that I saw you all off screen also and I was like you know you have that hero material quality to be honest. But Tell me one thing how's this journey been for you almost a decade ho chuka hai correct so how's the journey um, been oh it's it's a mixed bag lots of highs and lows and uh, like everyone else i think uh, who's ever been a part of mumbai uh, this city kind of encapsulates you in a very different way you know it it owns right. you and um, every single day is different uh, one that whether you have work or not it keeps you on your toes it keeps you busy with something or the other uh so uh, when obviously when an actor is at work uh, then obviously you know it's it's a great feeling but when he or she is not at work that's that's where the the patience uh, testing time begins and what do you do with that time is what matters right uh so i've just trying to be i've just been um, keeping myself busy when the times when you know i'm surrounded by uh dark clouds when it comes to not having work okay uh i try to imbibe everything that comes my way in terms of uh whether it's workshops or re- uh, fitness training uh acting workshops dance a little bit of here and there so whatever i can you know get my hands on to i like to indulge and um, me and my wife we are uh, travel enthusiasts so yes. we like to go around a lot and uh, we are uh, we are otherwise very family oriented we are not really that outgoing and social right. butterflies as you yes. call it so we we uh, we do our own thing you know we we watch a lot of content we just we are very happy uh, by ourselves keep doing something or the other and besides that i think if you were to talk about my journey i think my journey has been um, you know when i came to mumbai i if with everyone whoever comes to the city has big dreams right and uh, some are ambitious some are over ambitious uh, so when i came i remember i said that uh, i want to try this out for 6 months because i come from a corporate background exactly so i um, i i came to mumbai pretty late to begin with my as so as to call mm. the struggle period you know so when i came here and i spoke to people who were coordinators and um, you know people who who can get direct you navigate you towards uh, auditions and stuff 
they would tell me that you are joking you can't be coming here for 6 months nothing will happen in 6 months you've got to be here for years i said no no you know i'm very strategic i i want to do it very methodically and i will uh, if i management to yeah strategy. like i was yeah strategy that uh, i'm going to be working on my targets and if it doesn't happen then i'm just going to pack my bag and do what i what i'm qualified to do but then it doesn't happen like that right so when once you begin to audition uh, that's when you realize that actually there's a long way ahead of you and you can't be uh, i was very overconfident uh when i would look at films and and think to myself that i can do that i can pull that off what doesn't work like that right unless you are trained in it uh unless you've actually tasted uh the the you know the whole process of being on camera and being on a set a filming set you will never know how difficult it is so that's exactly what happened with me and i think i just kept getting better with the auditions that i was taking and before i knew it i had my first acting job and then ever since that i i i never needed to look back and and think that maybe i need to pack my bag and go back so so yeah things have been uh, it's been an interesting journey it teaches you a lot you right. know on the, on the times during the times when you you get your uh, acting career started you, you feel that you've arrived it suddenly uh, suddenly just everything vanishes and then you're back it humbles you you yeah. know and you're thinking oh okay Uh, now what and then you begin all over again right uh, so the audition process and then that's it's like like this you know yeah it it never goes constant i think every actor would would relate to this that it's always an up and down in an actor's life but acting was never the plan for you so it was never a plan because i never allowed myself because i came from a background where i knew that my parents will not like it okay uh if i ever was to disclose this you know this desire of ah. uh becoming an actor i know that i wouldn't get an approval so i never even approached and i did i, I came from a household where uh my parents would decide most of the things with me i mean i hmm. i got mature or sensible very late in life only when i moved to the uk and and i started living on my own before that i was just completely dependent on whatever my parents would decide i would just go with it so so it was always a a suppressed dream in my head never really gave it a chance because i was not gutsy enough to face my father and say that let me just do this for yeah. once uh, i remember when i was in the uk and i was just passing by uh, one of the city centers in london and i saw an acting school there and uh, this is after i had done my graduation i was working as a business analyst and i called my dad uh, that instead of doing the and the you know doing planning to do masters i uh, vaguely ke mujhe samajh aa whether it's uh, an mba or so an msc what is it that i want to do i was still contemplating yeah so i called my dad and said ke papa वैसे एक बात बताऊं अगर मास्टर्स की जगह अगर मैं ये एक्टिंग कोर्स कर लूं तो सो he said he replied to me in haryanvi baula ho gaya ke so ke tu pagal hai kya so i said yeah of course like i i expected that you know what was i thinking so i put the phone down and i said okay no the matter so yeah i mean i i did whatever i had to do i came back to india then in 2010 and then but then how started. exactly how did you convince manage to convince them you know so i think everything happens at the right time okay uh had i spoken to my dad before uh before i became something now i had a steady job i had a career ahead of me i had already worked for 5 years as mm. in the corporate you know so it was not that difficult to persuade him and tell him that let me just give it 6 months if it doesn't work out then i've got this anyway right where is this going and by then i had also gained a little bit of maturity and so my father could see that and by now i i also had a conviction which i never had before so he looked at me and he said i think it's the eyes you know it's it's the face it's all overall your demeanor how, when you approach me and you say that you know this is what you want to do uh, as opposed to when i see that you've got the the passion and the fire uh, that's exactly what he saw i'm assuming and he just went with it he said theek hai but make sure that you are either it should either be your uh, 
uh, savings when when they get exhausted or six months, whichever happens before you come back. Okay. So I said, okay, not yeah, that that's doable. We can do this. But then after you came here, there was no going back. Yeah, then there was no turning back. But you know, I was reading one of your old interviews where you mentioned that when you came in came into this industry in the initial days, there was also a casting couch experience that probably happened with you. Hmm. I would like to know a little more details on that. I think it's uh, back in the days. I don't know whether it still happens, but back in the days, uh, this used to be a very uh, common norm. Yeah. Uh, everyone used to go through it, and uh, and I came to Mumbai prepared. Okay. Uh, mentally, I knew what I'm putting myself into. I'd heard stories. I never really faced it. I didn't have a friend. There was nobody in Mumbai that I knew. who could sort of navigate me guide me whatever so mm. but i'd heard stories i'd seen a lot of interviews so oh this happens that happens so i said yeah it, we'll deal with it when when that happens to me uh, can't really generalize and be uh, you know okay skeptical exactly so so uh, one of the coordinators um, i went to his office i had heard a lot about him and uh, he was apparently that you know the big guy who kind of a lot of the projects that he was handling were big ones you know so when i went and i uh, and he said to me he says you know i'm i can start sending you to dubai <laughs> i said oh okay sure <laughs> i didn't know <laughs> what context he's talking about so but there was he was then as he kept on talking that's when i started realizing that okay it's some shady stuff that he's talking about it's not about sending me for a project you know it was something yeah. else So I said, "Oh," and I felt so dumb. I said, "Because all along I've just been playing along." So I, "Ah, cool, cool, yeah, sure." And I'm sounding very enthu about this, and and then he said, "Okay, uh, uh, so you're ready?" I said, "Oh, okay. You know what? It took me some time to understand, but no, this is not what I'm here for. I'm actually." So he said, uh, "Beta, jute ghis jayenge." He said, "Ha, itna struggle hai Mumbai mein." कि तुम्हारे जूते घिस जाएंगे और जब तुम थक जाओ ना तो वापस आ जाना आई एन आई लेफ्ट विद वॉज नो हार्ड फीलिंग इट्स नॉट लाइक आई वॉज ब्रोकन आई वॉज शैटर्ड और एनी थिंग आई सेड श्योर एंड आई इज वेरी विद अ नाइस स्माइल एक्सचेंज प्लेजेंट्रीज बिकॉज आई थॉट यू नो दिस गाईज बिन डूइंग दिस फॉर सो मेनी इयर्स एंड दैट्स हाउ कॉन्फिड ही हिज और वॉज सो कॉन्फिडेंट बिकॉज I just assume that that confidence comes from the amount of people that have succumbed to it and they they agreed to it. Yes. And uh, so that's why his approach was like that. Ke aisa hoga to fir so I said that's okay. I'll manage. But wo ek kahani sunne mein aur actual mein experience karne mein what's the head space like when you experienced it? You know honestly uh, it was no not so daunting. Okay. Because it's happened so many times to me in the past, you know. Uh, even in the uk there was one time i was traveling on the train it was late night and somebody made a pass at me and i thought that was the first experience and i i was quite young then and uh, that kind of shook me but after that episode nothing ever has you know shaken me up because i what can you, i'm a strong guy Right. you know nobody can really hold my hand and do something physically with me so i realized that all of this is all is all talk what's the worst that they can do they, you know so it's not like they can so i don't allow anybody to kind of play on my mind like have that psychological effect or it's okay they said what they had to say i say no i move out that's it it's very simple yeah i i don't want to give it more importance than it deserves also can we say that yeh mohabbat was the game changer for you absolutely, absolutely. both on a, on both a personal as well as a professional level yeah absolutely because it was my first uh, big show yeah uh, prior to that i had done a, a tv show which was veera but uh, i think the kind of exposure that i because the trps was so high everyone has seen yeh mohabbat even till date uh there are people who refer to me as the acp yeah <laughs> you know abhimanyu or abhishek 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 yeah so um I, that was the game changer absolutely because then i started getting tv offers and it was a balaji balaji show it was a big big deal you know hmm. and uh, when i first joined i i didn't know 
who the leads were what was happening on the sets nothing i was i was very new you know i'd done a show prior to that but this was a complete different ball game altogether also you know how did the equation with divyanka build with you know divyanka's also been on the show and she's also you know shared hmm. how the meeting happened and you know initially few people in the team knew about it and you hmm. all would meet logo ke saath mein so that you know media mein bahar khabar na jaye yeah 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 i want to know, know your side of the story <laughs> some things are meant to happen when they when they are about meant meant to happen you know because uh, with me and divyanka uh, we didn't meet that many times it right. was it was a setup uh, somebody i was sharing my makeup room with had got ideas in his head that i could be a good life partner to divyanka and vice versa and he kind of stitched us and uh, we met a couple of times and uh, and then yeah things just went ahead with it you know couple of times we met and we realized that we are uh, we are supposed to be together okay. and uh, i remember pankaj bhatia uh, my friend who i used to share with yeah, so so pankaj used to say ke tu puri zindagi thank you bolte hue nahi thakega uh, you know that's how wonderful she is because i i showed a little bit of resilience towards an arrange setup in the huh. beginning i said nahi yaar mujhe nahi i'm just starting my career and this and that he said no no but she's a wonderful person and uh, you guys will be great together my first hiccup was that she's such a big star how will i be able to like in my head i was thinking that i'd have to take care of her expenses <laughs> <laughs> i said how will i afford uh so but uh, he goes that no no she doesn't need anything you know mm. she is she's a very independent woman you take care of yourself so i said okay that i can do <laughs> but was the resilience from the family also or was it no no just from my side because okay. i i didn't want to it was the beginning of my career and i was trying to establish myself and i needed that confidence i think it was right. more about it was not so much about the financial stability it was more to do with the confidence that on the day of my marriage i need to feel accomplished that i have done something after coming to mumbai i'm not like a you know i'm not struggling still Hmm. so like at least have a place of my own uh, back then i used to live uh, with four other boys hmm. you know in a 2 bhk so i thought marriage should happen once when i have a i have my own 2 bhk yeah. at least something like that you know that kind of stability i'm talking about right. amazing also you know kahin na kahin there has always been this tag of divyanka's husband vivek okay hmm. How do you deal with that? Because कहीं ना कहीं you know एक वो होता है कि यार people should also know me for the person that I am and I am also accomplished rather than just being known as an mm. actor's husband or you know an actor's wife for that matter. Mm-hmm. So how do you deal with that tag? I deal with it very uh, sensibly now. I would say that it it's been a journey. You know, it doesn't happen like overnight that suddenly I've turned wiser and mm. oh it doesn't I'm in a Zen mode. It doesn't affect me. there were times when i when i used to get bogged down with these thoughts uh, but we were still quite mature when we first entered into it uh, into the institution of marriage we hmm. we spoke at length that this will happen you know uh, before i proposed to her in front of her family we sat down and the family and her everyone made me aware that it will be it's quite likely to happen that you will be compared that you will be tagged han ji blah 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 are you okay with that that time also i said absolutely because it's them you know it's the unknown people talking will not affect me what she says or what you guys the family if you start feeling like that then it will affect me right you know the day divyanka starts to feel that she is more accomplished and that i am not an achiever and that i am i am not um as capable the day you start to get that vibe or that feeling that's when i'll be doomed right i'll be devastated that day but if you have faith in me then nothing can shatter nothing nothing will affect me you know yeah um it doesn't matter what people say there is one side of you know doesn't matter what people say but 
there are times when the trolling goes a little out of hand especially mm. in this day and age of social media mm. and that has happened with you guys yeah. to a great extent whether it was you know divyanka being body shamed or you know you people calling you also people putting certain tags on you also mm. as an individual as well as as a couple how did you guys deal with this you know this kind of toxicity and negativity that came from social media and you know still keeping your sanity in the right place so first of all we, both of us are one yeah in, into this luckily i've got complete support of my partner and and vice versa so we discuss it we okay. don't keep it bottled up if something's bothering me first of all most of the times it doesn't i don't let it enter you know at this yeah. this wall it doesn't penetrate through the times when it does of course we are vulnerable we are only humans and you know Correct. there will be times when we will get affected uh those times we just talk it out sometimes i'll say oh i'm so pissed off i don't this is what i've learned i'm a jart you mm. know yeah. and by nature jarts are uh, supposed to be emotional mm. and so am i but you know i have learned over the years that out of emotion whatever you you want to post whatever you want to reply uh whether it's in person or on social media always think twice do not respond when you are emotional right because in in the beginning of my career i i wrote some some bad nasty re- re- responses i gave yes. and then i only didn't like it the next morning when i woke up when i was normalized you know i i was thinking ah no that's not my character i just said it out of uh, uh out of anger out of frustration so what we now do is that if i'm angry i'll speak to her sometimes it's good to respond in an anger but just have that thought ha huh. just have that after thought like that second thought ke how will this be taken by the media huh. by people who are our supporters because they support us they love us for the characters that we have you know we can't suddenly become a demon <laughs> you and know? you know sorry i'm cutting you here but i have also been around for some time in this field now and i feel that an actor's image is very fragile hmm wo zara sa ek statement ya ek wo comment can just tarnish yeah. it big time yeah totally like during covid during covid i i remember that something had happened and i i expressed something to do with uh, i think migrant workers there was something mm-hmm. to to do with that so i had posted something and there was another perspective of this one lady and and she said but this 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 so i i responded but then there were some people who start in order to favor her they started becoming nasty so i also became covid sitting at home frustration you know so i also responded in that uh, you know slightly nasty way but which i didn't, didn't didn't like and she said to me she said you know what i used to be a fan of yours and i'm blocking you and i don't like you anymore so i said yeah please please go ahead do what you want hmm. okay and she blocked me two days later i don't know something transpired and i messaged her and i said look everything that you said i understand but also respect my point of view correct one story can have multiple perspectives it's act- absolutely okay i respect yours please Correct. please respect mine too we don't need to just because we want to prove a point that you know my story is better than we don't you don't need to disagree with me we can just agree to disagree and move on and then she responded and then <laughs> there were a few messages exchanged and and then she unblocked me okay <laughs> and she's like okay i like you again <laughs> said, okay that's good but you know as an actor slash celebrity slash public figure sometimes do you think having an opinion of your own gets difficult because kya hota hai na aap kuch bologe to bhi aapke aapke khilaf ja sakta hai aap nahi bologe to bhi aapke khilaf ja sakta hai absolutely how do you deal with that then we normally whatever it is whatever is brewing inside we like to just speak to our relatives family near and dear ones we don't go out there and post anything unnecessary which which might be of uh, a conflicting interest to others 
Hmm. We don't want to upset any community. We don't want to upset any sentiments. Why would you do that? You know. Right. So just keep your personal opinions to yourself. I think that's the best way. Uh, of course, it's a deterrent uh, when it comes to um, being. When we are supposed to speak, we should stand up for something. I understand that, and I really want to, but I wish that it was slightly the the. the culture around it was slightly more favorable right where actors are allowed to speak what they want to they and they're not judged by what has come out of their mouth or you know on social media i am absolutely okay to have a discussion i am not i'm not perfect and you correct. can correct me if i'm wrong but do that respectfully i will never disrespect you hmm. you know i i will honor everything that you say because that every person has a story Th- their right. learnings their experiences they all we all come from different backgrounds so your perspective will be different from mine and i would personally love to understand your story and wh- what is your point of view so just do the same for me also exactly also you know in this industry okay as an actor today do you fear or do you have this fear of being forgotten and you know do you constantly battle the pressure of being relevant the emergence of social media that yes the sudden hype that that got built up 4 5 years back 6 years back i think uh or even before there were times when uh, th- those original times as in not original but uh, the starting times i would say uh we were excited to post ha huh. on social media you know we were excited to share what's happening in our lives but now it's just become a compulsive need you are no longer doing it because you enjoy doing it it's become uh, a need of the hour yes uh, because for the same reason that if you don't post regularly for example you'll be lost your engagement will go low you will lose your followers and that for an actor uh makes hell lot of a difference because suddenly your ads will go those digital digital yeah. ads you know and they really help for us to sustain uh, when we don't have projects that thought of being irrelevant that happens every single day every morning uh now i don't do it anymore you know i, I said jayega to jayega abhi kuch nahi hai but in between like during covid what, what do you how do you post every day you sitting at home what can you really <laughs> how how do you produce content sitting at home kitna galuna coffee bana le correct to us time pe aisa lagta tha ki pressure hone laga tha ki subah utho aur aap subah uthte hi soch rahe ho are aaj kya post karna hai yaar aaj kya dalne hai to zabardasti ka na and you can make out you know people personal at a personal level and you see that they are not like you are not this but you're posting this you know so you you know that it's all been created right and uh that is you know cringe for me <laughs> i don't like it i i just yeah so it's it's always there uh fear of being irrelevant or forgotten uh, for an actor i think it's always there but also i think it's important uh, that you at that particular time if you're able to work on yourself <laughs> then you can have a comeback correct you know if you're really good if you're really talented then a hmm. comeback is possible you know like you mentioned in the beginning both you and divyanka are not social butterflies hmm. but then as an actor how in these 9 years how accustomed have you become to the way the industry functions you know in terms of the red carpet appearances or you know being out there in the public domain and the scrutiny that comes with it i don't think we've been subjected to too many scrutinies okay. we've been fairly okay uh because one is that we don't go to events every other event we we are very selective yeah so me and divyanka we are uh, we're both on the same page when it comes to giving and receiving respect okay like we really believe in if we feel that this particular event is just calling us because they've called several other actors hmm. but they don't really hold a deep value in in their head for us then we will pass we will okay. probably you know have a rain check or whatever but otherwise uh, where we feel that you know this one is all heart 
देन वील गो सो हमने बड़ा अपना सिंपल रखा हुआ है जहाँ पे लगता है कि यहाँ पे हम वैल्यू ऐड कर सकते हैं यहाँ पे बहुत दिल से कोई बुला रहा है तो फिर हम बट देन कभी कभार यू नो ऐसा भी सिचुएशन होता है वे बींग सीन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट सो वॉट अबाउट अ सिचुएशन लाइक दैट समटाइम्स समटाइम्स यू यू डू दैट ऑल्सो कंसिडरिंग दैट इट्स इट्स कम्फर्टेबली डूएबल इफ इट्स देर आर टाइम्स वैन वी डन दैट एंड एंड इट्स एब्सोल्यूटली ओके आई थिंक इट्स वन हैज़ टू बी फ्लेक्सीबल वन कॉन्ट बी लाइक रिजिड एंड बी सो अप टाइट दैट नो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू बी सो वी वेरी फ्लेक्सीबल मन करता है तो चले जाते हैं नहीं मन करता तो नहीं जाते हैं ऑल्सो यू नो With ये है मोहब्बत है यू नो वॉज प्रॉबली वन ऑफ दोज लास्ट शोज जिसमें वो टेलीविजन का एक गोल्डन एरा था यू नो द कॉन्टेंट ऑन टी वी वॉज वेरी डिफरेंट बैक देन करेक्ट आफ्टर दैट द शोज प्रॉबली दैट केम एंड यू वॉज वर्क आफ्टर दैट यू वर्क इन कावा चैन ऑल इफ एम नॉट रॉन्ग बट कहीं ना कहीं टी वी का कॉन्टेंट कुछ सालों में बहुत रिग्रेसिव हो चुका है यू नो देर इज नो फ्रेशनेस इन कॉन्टेंट वही घिसा पिटा इट्स नॉट अडेप्टिंग टू द ऑडियंस सेंसिबिलिटीज एज एन एक्टर हाउ डू यू चूज अ प्रोजेक्ट देन इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट इट्स दैट्स वाई आई टेकन अ सबैटिकल फ्रॉम टी वी फॉर द सेम रीजन बिकॉज नथिंग गुड आई डेंट आई डेंट डिस्कलोज इट टू द इंडस्ट्री और टू एनी वन दैट ओ आई एम सिटिंग एट होम आई एम टेकिंग अ ब्रेक फ्रॉम टी वी आई डेंट से दैट इज जस्ट दैट एनी थिंग दैट वॉज कमिंग अक्रॉस साउंड इट रिग्रेसिव सो आई सेड आई एम बेटर ऑफ नॉट डूइंग इट राधर दैन डूइंग इट विदाउट पैशन बिकॉज डूइंग अ टेलीविजन शो इज दिव्यांका पुट्स इट वेरी एप्टली यू नो शी सेज दैट वेन यू डू अ टेलीविजन शो इट्स इट्स लाइक गेटिंग मैरिड टू वन Yes. You know, you and it kind of got ingrained in my head ever since when she made that statement somewhere. I I heard and I said, yeah, that is so true. Because if your heart's not in it, then you'll just do a very mediocre job. And I don't want to do that. Yeah, I I want to do it with all my heart and passion. Of course, there are times when you have to do it for the money. You know, that is a separate thing altogether. See, it's a TRB based model. Correct. You know. uh tv that's how it works and for the tier 1 uh, for the tier 2 and tier 3 cities they make shows because that's where oh. the u- viewership comes from so um it's like you know demand and supply if uh, because their tv has tried to experiment and try to give something different to the audience but it hasn't worked right so uh, i've spoken to so many people you know from different channels and they say what do we do we want to give new age content and you know we want to revive and create fresh fresh perspectives but people don't receive it they are running a business they uh, probably very, want to see the usual college between the saas bahu yeah it's it's very easy for yeah. for an actor to diss tv and say ke you know this is ladda on a larger perspective if you were a producer if i became a tv producer today or if i was to work in a in a uh, channel you know would i be concerned about uh, changing mindsets or would i be concerned concerned about making money that is a choice right. now somebody with that vision who wants to change perspectives somebody really that big who doesn't care about money has to come around and say enough is enough i am going to now bring in a serious change into uh, content viewership also if i'm not wrong you also explore ott and films yeah How's that experience been? So OTT and films again. Um, OTT, the one that I did was almost like doing a film. You hmm. know, uh, they do it. Uh, so as opposed to doing a TV show, uh, there's more attention to detail. Right. You know, you get to work on the character. You get your script in prior. Then you uh, you have your discussions with the director as to how they have the. the vision and how they want to see the scene and stuff like so because there's more time given to it uh, obviously the output comes out better but also kahin na kahin you know that transition between tv and ott is that easy not at all it's very 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 hard <laughs> also you get labeled because you get labeled as a tv actor exactly i so. was just coming to that that you know you get labeled as a tv actor mm. and it gets very difficult for an actor to get out of that label or you know to just get rid of that label but also as an actor who 
एक वो कहीं ना कहीं टाइप कास्ट होने का भी डर होता है कि यू नो इफ आई डू दिस पर्टिकुलर काइंड ऑफ रोल पीपल आर गोइंग टू परसीव मी लाइक दैट एंड प्रोबेबली दर ऑफर्स यू गेट आफ्टर दैट आर ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी वेरी सिमिलर या दैट हैपन विद मी व्हेन आई डिड वीरा आई वाज प्लेइंग अ कॉप एंड देन यह मोहब्बत कॉप कॉल्ड मी बिकॉज देट सी मी इन यूनिफॉर्म सो इट इज वेरी इजी फॉर एनी वन यू नो वेन आई डिड एन एन एस जी कमांडो आई प्लेड दैट कैरेक्टर I suddenly started getting uh, auditions for commando roles. Okay. And I I had to turn that down because I said now abhi pehle cop ke baad cop phir ab commando 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 hi karta rahunga kya. I want to do other characters. So test me for other characters. So I was deliberately telling people I said give me a terrorist. Let me play the the off side to it. Yeah. You know and uh, give me an assassin, give me uh, other things besides uh, commando. so yeah it happens but i think that happens with everyone so True. one can't get bogged down with are i think nothing whatever happens here is ever personal correct that only you are experiencing uh, thousands and lakhs of other people have experienced that during their lifetimes uh, spending in mumbai you know absolutely so in these 9 years in the industry i'm sure you've also made some very good friends but how strong friends do friendships last in this industry and how easy is it to make friends in this industry so most of the friends that you make are friendships of convenience okay friendships of good times and i'm absolutely okay with that let me just put it like that because it is very unnatural for a human being to get connected to you at this age right or at this phase of your life the ones that you have a strong bond with obviously we all know just say school ki friendships yeah people who've known you for for years you know they are sustainable friendships everything else <clears throat> it comes and goes hmm um i've had there have been times when i felt that you know this is uh, i've had a very strong bond with somebody a friend of mine and then yeah. suddenly i've i felt that it was only in my head that it was so strong okay you know it was i was delusional so i and then i've learned that it was me uh, who was stupid and honestly you can't blame anybody because we are all here to do a job we are all here to live a life uh, that is full of ambitions and dreams so um, you know for one to feel hurt or betrayed i learned it the hard way in the sense that i mean i'm i'm good that i i'm happy that i've learned it now right. and i don't have very high expectations from the new friends that i make i'm very easy so if if it happens if it by default if that relationship sustains for a longer period of time wow brilliant if it doesn't it doesn't bother me also right yeah also you know i want to know first of all how much has marriage changed vivek mm. secondly uh, when i was speaking to divyanka we had you know discussed that marriage is all about having that perfect balance hmm so what is your take on that also so marriage requires a lot of patience and understanding yes you know it is not a walk in the park it's not rosy every day but we make it as bright as beautiful there has to be a constant effort that effort sometimes comes very organically very naturally sometimes we have to push ourselves hmm you know because there will be times when you will fight with your own personality right uh something that you're born with something that you are um that you are so used to doing for so many years may not be necessarily right or it could be conflicting to your partner's personality mm. so now how do you meet midway if you are uptight and if you are like this then it won't work yeah you have to be submissive you know you have to surrender yourself at some point or the other things that really matter to you that you hold very deeply 
you convey that to your partner you know these are the things i really need also when two creative people are married from the same field how does that balance come in then like what's the key to make it work oh uh, honestly on on that perspective from that perspective i think i'm very 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 lucky i consider myself extremely fortunate because she is so i am between the two of us she is more of um, because, because she is more patient she is not as shifty as i am okay like i've i've got this constant energy that i want to do something i can't sit still in one place i want to i want to be mobile the whole time mm. she is completely the opposite she'll just sit and you know when it comes to reading when it comes to watching content when it comes to reflecting absorbing observing she is miles ahead of me but when it comes to being creative you know i'm probably more creative between okay. the both of us and we've had this discussion i'm not just making this up in my head but she's only told me uh, i get a lot of ideas i get a lot of uh, perspectives so uh, it's a very good balance because she is an avid uh, i mean she watches a lot of content and she's got a worldly knowledge of content right we are both very passionate about the thing that that mm -hmm. we are very passionate about the profession that we are in so it does come home we don't leave it at work we normally c bring it home okay <laughs> and then we discuss it and we both of us we are absolutely okay uh, to hear it out uh, if she's had a tough day good day bad day whatever it is she comes home and she discusses it with me and vice versa so i'll discuss every performance with her um you know something's gone great i will tell her i rocked it today and sometimes i'll come home uh, with my head down and she's like what's wrong how how terrible was it how bad can it be and i like i feel like is it the end of the world like, no it's not so then you know, come on but are there differences also because in the creative field that usually happen yeah i mean but that's very insignificant okay not not differences differences very subtle very minor and we are both mature enough to understand that also that because you we are both creative we both come from the same field there will be different point of views right you know and we understand that so we we don't argue over it no but mine is correct mine is better than yours like i said we have we generally have respect for anybody else's perspective also nice also you know 6 years ago you won naj baliye and now we see you on jhalak dikhla ja what probably what drove you to again you know going for another dance reality show uh just the fact that i i was missing nach baliye so much okay i was missing the routine i was missing the pressure the performances you know the sleep, sleepless night before the performance uh just being on stage and getting the scores the comments and getting a feedback from the the audience you know how well we did or bad we performed whatever whatever so all of that entire thing uh surrounding i thought it was very very exciting it was one of the best phases of my life well, only one thing was that i took too much pressure that time okay of being divyanka's partner you know oh. divyanka tripart his partner husband so i inflicted a lot of it was self self imposed pressure so this time when it came through i said okay this time alone i'm alone so i i want to just enjoy this journey i i will not let anybody down because that time i was thinking that i can't underperform hmm. being divyanka's husband but this time i'm on my own so i can underperform also there is no uh, there is nothing you know uh, so i want to enjoy this journey i want to work really hard but if i falter i falter it's on me you know aap se baat karke maine ek cheez what i could grasp was that you know you've been somebody who've listened to people around you you've taken their advice you've done that you but at the same time you've also followed your passion mm. and that is a very you know rare quality in today's time people get influenced very fast mm. okay and kahin na kahin us chakkar mein they forget to chase their dreams or to chase their passion mm. i want to know or probably if you have to give a message to your fans about you know chasing that dream and you know probably following your passion what would you tell them i would tell them that be practical like i said that everything has a time and you will get your opportunity but what is more important right now you've got to balance everything out i'm not one of those i'm not an advocate to 
oh just follow your passion blindly yeah i'm not one of those guys okay. when i com- came to bombay i had a plan in in my head so plan of course you will falter of course everything's not going to go as per the plan so keep that 20% bandwidth or buffer whatever you know but think think it through just don't go into it blindly and then once you've decided once you've made the decision then just do everything whatever you can then don't think twice don't think that if this doesn't happen what is the plan b right uh, that's what i did when i came to bombay and i thought that oh six months mein nahi hoga to main wapas chala jaunga hmm. uh, i had a plan b but one shouldn't okay one should just go with it with with complete intensity and do everything within their means to achieve it but you know for an outsider who probably comes into this industry to make it big or you know to make a name is giving up an option no so i feel that <clears throat> when i said that think think it through yeah. be practical i meant that if you're if you feel inadequate say for example that you're not getting the roles you you're you auditioning i'm talking from an actor's point of view yeah. you've been auditioning you're not getting anything positive then maybe there is some need for some training like when i went for my first audition i was terrible at it but i went i was resilient i was uh, i was you know pushing it because i thought let me start observing what is it that all the other people are doing that i am not doing hmm. so sometimes if you're not getting something that you want maybe you need to put a few things in action like get do theater uh, do some acting workshop be good at it one thing is feeling that in a feeling oh i can do this uh, and one thing is knowing that right. i can do this so make sure that you know that you can pull this through that is being practical okay. you know and not be de- delusional in your, in the head space that oh i can pull this off just b- based on your gut feeling because that gut feeling is very good right you need that also but on top of whatever training and once you've done that then that extra layer of confidence really helps also lastly so the vivek today who's sitting here if that vivek gets a chance to meet the vivek who was probably you know doing those corporate jobs and thinking that one day i will probably you know follow my passion what would this vivek tell that vivek i would just tell him that leave all of it and get to bombay asap because the soon the, the earlier you start the better it is for you you know i i obviously waited out i did my masters at the age of what 28 27 28 okay then i worked for 5 years and then i came here so i was uh, i think that's the only thing i wish i'd started a little early so i would have that much time even if it was 3 years 5 years before i came i would have been somewhere else but that's okay you know right. i uh, i look at it very positively that because if i'd come here 5 years back then i wouldn't be the same guy i wouldn't have the the bandwidth to work as hard i came with a certain amount of maturity and that's how bombay did not intimidate me also how emotionally evolved are you today i mean it's hard to say but i um, i am strong i am i'm quite solid uh, as compared to how i was maybe 3 years back okay 2 years back i think i have become this what i am today post covid covid really helped me sort out my mental space okay well on that note thank you so much for the movie oh, it's time been a pleasure. this with us it was lovely talking to you likewise so keep rocking always thank you looking forward to see you in this dream james bond avatar so sure. one day and i <laughs> hope that so happens much. soon yeah thank you thank you hi this is vivek dhaiya and you're watching me on bollywood bubble